Hi guys and welcome to the first video that I'm doing for my um, Genetics 214 video series. Um, I'm really excited to be able to do it. Uh, it's going to be really fun and I hope it really helps a lot of you because I'm sure everyone's kind of upset and worried about what's going to happen with our module and how we have to pretty much self-study a lot of it. Um, so I'm going to try and help you guys out and hopefully we all get through this because it's an annoying module and yeah anyways um so yeah this is the first video that i'm doing and i thought i'm going to start out really easy um because obviously all of you are at different levels and what i want to do is i want to start out with very easy work and kind of build up to the harder questions how i want to do it is first i'm just going to teach you kind of background and the fundamentals and why we're doing things move on to a tech question and then lastly go to a test question. So I thought that would be great so everyone could kind of see where they are and pretty much get up to speed with everything. Um, first thing I'm starting off with is chromosomal mapping and pretty much just how to write out your chromosomal constitution and how to get your F2 groups. So I'm going to be talking you through that now. Okay, so... There may be a question where they ask you, okay, what do the F2 progeny look like? What are their numbers? Um, what are the recombinant, recombinant types? What are the parental types? So I'm going to explain that all to you. I hope everyone's okay with the light, by the way. And also the sound. Let me know, like, everyone can tell me in the group if the sound's not good or there's something wrong with the setup. I know I've got, like lights flashing here but that's because of like the light in front of me or whatever okay so what i'm starting out with is i have two individuals my p1 individuals and one of them is homozygous dominant for both genes so gene a and gene b and the other is homozygous recessive for gene a and gene b right so these are obviously the chromosomes for this individual and these are the chromosomes for that individual um so i'm just going to fill them in so this is your gene one region so i got my two a's and my two big b's and then on this side i have my two little a's and my two little b's now i'm sure everyone understands that i'm just writing out the chromosomal constitution i just want to notify everyone that this won't always be the case like you they may be nasty and they might won't give us like individuals that are homozygous for both genes. But remember that their genotypes, what we write out there like AA, BB, so and so forth, is not the same as their chromosomal con constitution. You may get an individual that looks like this. They may start out with an individual that looks like that. But we don't know if they are like this. Or they could be like this. Sorry, I did that kind of wonky. Um, yeah, so you can see like the individual could be this, the individual could be like that, or it could be different, you know. So you must always keep that in mind that that's how they like to trick you. But anyways, that's a different story that might pop up in another video. So we have our two individuals and I'm going to show you a surefire way on how to get your F1, right? So I'm just going to draw an arrow here to kind of show you that I always move in this direction when I'm trying to get my F1. So I've got all my highlighters here. So I'm, I love to highlight. So grab a highlighter and highlight everything you do. Um, okay, so I'm just going to highlight this one. So I always highlight my top line for individual one. And then I'm going to highlight my top line for individual two. And that's always what I do. Those are the two chromosomes that I, or the, yeah, the two chromosomes that I use to get my F1. So if I write it down here, that's what my F1 looks like. So I only took the two top ones and that's what, that's always what you do. Like it's the rule of thumb when you're trying to get your F1. If you didn't know that, then I'm glad you know it now. But now we're still trying to get our F2 right we need to know what our f2 individuals look like and this is where the like kind of trickiness comes in so they don't tell you this but when you have to cross your f1 it's always crossed with a homozygous recessive type 
like always they may not tell you in a test but it it like always is um i don't know why <laughs> but like that's what they do i think it's just like to kind of i think it's like a test cross sort of thing so you the your one you'll always know what your one parent looked like if that kind of makes sense i hope that kind of makes sense so i'm just going to write my um other parent in here that I'm going to cross it with. So we know that that's the first chromosome that I got from there. And that's my other chromosome that I got from my other parent. It's from there. And I love to really highlight everything. It really does help um, when you're going on with your question. It just makes you see things a bit better. Here's my water. Yeah, okay, so like I told you before, you always cross the F1 with homozygous recessive for both genes individual. So that's easy to do. Just write it out. Okay, so here's my new cross that is actually going to give me my F2, right? But the tricky thing is, for P1, you never have crossovers. You just don't. But in your F1, your crossovers do come into play. So... How we're going to do this is, I always break it up into sections. It's easier for me. Um, I always do my parent types first. So I'm going to just write parent types. So I write half and cursive, half and normal. Um, I prefer writing in cursive, actually. Um, so I'm going to do my parent types. So what I do is I always move from left to right. So I take my top one. And I take my next um, top line individual. So I always do those two. And for my other parent, because remember there's always two parent types. I take my bottom line and my other bottom line. So those are going to be my parent types. So pretty much what it looks like. And you've got to draw this out, by the way. Each parent you've got to draw out. So my first one is going to be big... A, big B, and little a, little b. Then my next one is going to be little a, little b, and little a, little b. Okay, so those are your parent types. They phenotypically look like the parents. These are your parents. Okay, remember, it's not these two. They were your parents in the first generation. But because we're doing our F2, the F1 are your parents. Some people get confused with that. Those are my two parent types. They actually are genotypically and phenotypically look like the parents. But usually it's just what they phenotypically look like, by the way. Um, yeah, but now here comes the tricky part. New color. Um, is we're going to do our um, single crossovers because there's only two genes. I will be doing one for double crossovers, but that's only going to be in then like the future videos. So I always draw my crosses like that. Okay. So how, oh, and these are going to be your recombinant types. Because remember, parent types, there are no crossovers involved. Recombinant types always have your crossovers. Okay, cool. And write out headings for yourself. Um, it does make it a lot easier moving forward, and you don't get confused as you go on. Uh, still need that. Um, yeah, and like I said, your recombinant types, is literally, if, if you guys don't know, then your recomb recombinant types are actually like the individuals that had a crossover in them. Um, like a physical crossover happening in meiosis. So just remember that. So for the first crossover, I'm taking my big A and my big E. I'm a big B, sorry. I'm going to write down on my top line. And then, so now I took those two. And then I always use my top line in the next individual. And I write that down. So it's little a, big b. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I'm getting this wrong now. Sorry, little a, little b. Then, remember, your crossover also happens in the opposite direction. So I guess I'll do that in a different color. It might be helpful. There we go. So now I have little a and big b. So I'm going to write that in my top line. And then I take my bottom line here. And I pop that in. Alright, so now here's all my F2. So in my parent types, I just went like that. 
but then with my recombinant types I did my crossover and I took the top line for the first one and then I did the other side with that and then took the bottom ones for the next individual if that makes sense to you and that's how I got this individual so if you do it like that that's literally going to be your rule of thumb moving forward whenever you do um, chromosomal mapping and they ask you to get what do the progeny look like what are, what do their chromosomes look like what are their genotypes um, yeah that's just how you do it um, so that's just like a really good video to just start you up like how to do these crosses properly just remember always to write out your chromosomes because genotypes look different to phenotypes and their chrom um, well sorry I lie they don't look different to their phenotypes the genotypes look different to what actual chromosomes look like so really when you have a question like this just write everything out from start to finish because you could make a mistake when they want the genotypes in the F2 you could write them out incorrectly and then you know get no marks but yeah i hope you enjoyed the first video let me know what you guys think um i will be uploading loading the next video on how to deal with um map distance and i'll eventually move on to like how to do gene order um as well as working out percentages for your f2 progeny cool